What we're going to look at now is how we can take a 3D object, just like this cube that I have here. So I have this cube. How can I take this three-dimensional object, this cube, and do what's called drawing a net? And what a net is, is it's just an image of what this would look like if you folded the, the object out on a flat surface. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to remove the glass here. So if we do this, so here's our cube. Here's our cube here. And if I take this cube and I unfold it, so here's the one side unfolded, and I flip the top open, this would be what's called the net of this cube. So this part here would have represented the bottom. This flap here represents one of the sides. Here's another side. Here's another side here. And then if I take this part and flip it up, this part becomes the side. And then the top folds over like that. And so if I wanted to draw the net for a cube, I could simply draw it like so. There'd be all these squares here, four squares, one, two, three, four, and then on here. And this part would have been the bottom. This would be a side, a side, a side, a side. And when this gets folded up, this part becomes the top. And so the reason why nets are really important is because we will be later on finding the surface area of an object. And the surface area is the area of all the pieces added up. And so when we, when we get to see what a net looks like, we'll, we'll easily be able to see all the different parts, all the different sides, if you like, that make up an object. Let's look at some other familiar shapes. So here what we have is we have what's called a triangular prism. So it's called a triangular prism because it has a triangle on the top and the bottom. And what makes it a prism is it has that exact same shape on the top as it does on the bottom. So this is a triangular prism. And let's empty this object out of its little case. Okay, so here's our triangular prism, and what we're going to do is we're going to unfold it to see what the net looks like. And so when we do that, we can see that there's three, in this case there's going to be three squares and two triangles that make up this object. So folding the two triangles in, there's the two ends, and folding the two squares up, would give us a triangular prism. So I could say the net for the triangular prism would look like three squares and two triangles on the, on the ends like that. So this would be the bottom this is a side, this is a side, and then these two parts are the ends when they get folded up. So that's what a, a triangular prism would look like. That would be the net of the triangular prism. And if we were to find the surface area, we'd have to add up the area of these three squares and add up the area of the two triangles. So there's the net of a triangular prism. Let's look at another object. So here I have um, a cylinder. Call it a cylinder. But it's really a prism too because it has the same shape on the top as it has on the bottom. In this case, the shape is a circle. So let's see what the net would look like on this object when we empty out the shape. 
Okay, so here's here's the cylinder. And when we unwrap this object, you can see that we have two circles, and the circles would represent the top and the bottom, and we have a, a rectangle. So a cylinder is actually made up of two circles and one rectangle, the circle being the top and the bottom, the rectangle being the wraparound part. It's a wraparound part of the, of the cylinder. So when you see a cylinder, like a can, can of soup or something, really you can say that can of soup is made up of two circles, top and bottom, and the wraparound part, which is a rectangle. So for the net of the cylinder, I can say it's made up of a rectangle and two circles. And this would be the, say, the top, and this would be the bottom. And of course, they're the same shape, top and bottom, for a cylinder, two circles. And then this is the wraparound part. The wraparound part. So a cylinder is made up of two circles and a rectangle.